Hi folks, this is Don Meisner with the North Country Fishing Report. I want to tell you about one of the things that I observed on one of my last days fishing in the Grass River. And I've told you all before, I, I go there a lot because I can wade and I can catch lots and lots of smallmouth bass. Now probably 90% of the smallmouths that I catch in the Grass River are, are going to be 10 inches or less. And for some of you that might seem, oh, well, they're too little. They're not going to be fun. You take a light ultralight rod and a little bitty lure, and I got to tell you, they're about as much fun as anything can be. But, and I say this, let me back up and tell you what happened last week. I went to my favorite spot, and lo and behold, as I looked down the river, there were six guys out. In the, four of them were out in the water, and two of them were along the bank, right in my favorite stretch. And I thought, oh, boy. Well, there's no sense in me going there. So I went to another area that I hadn't fished in probably 10 years. It's another, you, you all know these different areas, but I've never had to go there because I have other places that are easy for me to go, easy access, and I can always catch fish. So I selected this other place and I thought, well, you know what? Maybe I'll learn a new thing. And there was a tremendous amount of slime on the, on the bottom all covering every single rock. Not only did it make it iffy in wading because I couldn't really see where the rocks ended to another rock because they're all different sizes. And with the slime, it makes them very slippery. But it made it so that almost every cast in the water within, oh, maybe a second, maybe a second after the lure hit the water, it was covered in slime. And then no fish is going to hit it then. And I thought, is this even worth it? Should I even try? But I did, and I waded upstream. And I normally like to fish downstream when I'm fishing these rivers. But I waded upstream, and I caught probably 10 to 14 fish. And I'd, go, I'd been out for quite a while, and I'm thinking, this is probably the least productive night. I'm still, I'm still lucky as can be to be here. I'm still happy to be here. It's better than a lot of other things that I might be doing. And I just had that feeling of freedom. It was wonderful. So I finally decided, I thought, you know, I better get back because it's getting darker. It's dark. I mean, it was still plenty light, but when you can't see the rocks you're waiting on, it's important that you not wait on them or you're going to fall and it could really hurt yourself. So I start back down and I'm going down. I'm not fishing much. And I come to this area and I see in the river that I think, okay, it's going to be safe to cross there. It looks shallow enough because all I have is hip boots. And I start across, and I just happened to look to my left, and I thought, oh, my gosh, I can't see bottom. This All of a sudden, the water dropped off really deep. I didn't know the water. I didn't know that area. And I thought, if anything, there must be a fish in there. So I stop, and I throw out, and I throw the little crayfish I was using. It's a little Z-Man crayfish, two and three-quarter inches long. And with a 1 20th ounce jig head, so it's, it's very, very light, but just enough weight to make it sink down to the bottom, but not snag very often. So it's going down to the bottom, and I, I feel a tap, and I set the hook, and the rod doubles over, and I think, holy cow, what have I got? And before I could find out, the hook came out. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, that was a huge, that must have been a muskie, I'm thinking to myself. So I do the same thing again. I think, well, maybe there's another one in the same spot because this pool, as deep as it was, wasn't very big. And I'm thinking, I don't know how, my, how many fish will be in there. So I put, I cast out again and it goes down and I feel that tunk, that tap, set the hook and I'm on to a big heavy fish. And I'm thinking, okay, this can't be a bass. I haven't caught a bass this big in this river. It must be a muskie. And I'm fighting it and fighting it, and all of a sudden I see the profile, and it's all brown, and I'm like, you got to be kidding me. It's a bass. And eventually, and I say eventually, in my mind it took three hours. Probably it took five minutes. I don't know. But eventually I get the fish close enough where I could reach down and I pull out the biggest smallmouth I've ever caught in the Grass River. I mean, it would make these pro anglers in the St. Lawrence River drool. It was that big. And I'm able to get the hook out and I put it back in the water. And remember, big fish have a harder time recovering. But it, it sat there in the water a bit and just by my feet and then it swam away. So I decide, okay... I'm ready to go home, but let me see if there's another one in the pool. 
I ended up catching three more bass in that pool between 16 and 18 inches. I will tell you that the big one I'm talking about was 21 and a half inches. So I had found a mega pool, a pool of everybody dream, at least of my dreams. And I wouldn't have even noticed it if I hadn't seen the water drop as I was walking. What am I trying to tell you? I think that in every body of, body of water we go to, there's one certain spot that the big babies go, and that's where they're going to be this time of the summer. And I just happened to luck out and find that spot. You can, if you're careful, and you look, and you observe the water, and you don't just crash through, and you can see. You can see where it gets all of a sudden deep, but it still has to have the right bottom. It still has to have the right movement of current and oxygen and all those other things. And if you find it, boy, you'll have a story to tell just like I just did. Until next time, folks, this is Don Meisner with the North Country Fishing Report. <laughs>